let me help you. I'm just going to give you guidelines on how to take back your life. But first of all, I must make the point to you for you to know the need and the necessity for you to take back your life. And the need and necessity is hanged on this factor, on this one fact, that you were sent here not for yourself. You were created by somebody, by him, by the creator, by the Lord Jesus, and for him, for himself. He created you for his own agenda, for his own purpose. You must take back your life from frivolity. You must take back your life from uh, trivality of life. You must take back your life from the vanity of life. You must take back your life from unfruitful activities. You must take back your life from emptiness. You must take back your life even from seemingly good things of life. And then find time to dedicate, you know, find time to yourself and to dedicate yourself to his purpose and to his own agenda. All right. So how do you take back your life? I'm going to give you some concrete points and questions that will help you to take back your life. Number one, do you have a concrete goal, concrete agenda that you are living for on a daily basis? Number two, is your life revolving on daily basis around those goals, that agenda, and that particular mission? Maybe you are born to resolve the problem of electricity in Nigeria. Maybe you are born to resolve the problem of corruption in your country. Maybe you are born to resolve the problem of human relations in the world. Maybe you are born to resolve the problem of kids, children, that are not feeling the love of the Father. Maybe you are born to be a pastor, to be a minister. Maybe you are born to, you know, to give life. To, you know, I don't know. You know, is your life revolving around, is, is your are your life daily are your daily life activities revolving around that particular that concrete goal for which you are created you know if you are you know somebody I, I was speaking with someone yesterday i almost wept because this person you know yeah great guy great guy i was really excited i'm happy that dear prayer uh introduced me to him and of course the wife uh, yeah, yeah. This guy is a talented inventor. I mean, created by God to provide answers and solutions to the problem of Africa and to the problem of humanity. I mean, even while I was talking with him for 30 minutes or so, in 30 minutes, he told me about his inventions. Maybe about, he mentioned about five, minimum five inventions that he had already thought up and came up with. He had invented solutions broad solution one of the things he, he, he has invented is how to make housing available to every nigerian another invention he came out with is how to get rid of uh computers you know table laptop i mean not, not laptops what do you call them computers yeah is it com computers stationary computers is it are they laptops we call them laptops computers yes stationary computers another he had many other ideas like that and this guy got born again. <laughs> and the pastor of the church he was going to told him, forget, I mean, leave those things out there. God will take care of them. You are supposed to take care of souls. The thing you are supposed to do is just to bring people to church and make the church grow. It's to the extent that they took him out of the lab, lab, uh, desktop, desktop, right? Talk to de de desktop computer, yes. They took this guy out of his laboratory. This guy is supposed to be locked up in some, in some laboratory somewhere. It's supposed to be locked up in some studio. But you know what the churches do? We are going back to the middle to the medieval ages, where the church just wants to control your life. Where the church, charismatic churches, just want to control your life. They just want to make sure that you come to church all the time. They want to know what you are doing with your time. 
It has even got so bad now. Even the medieval priests didn't do that. They, they want to know what you are doing with your time. Why are you not in church every, every time? Why are you not in church? This guy is not supposed to be in church. Church is not supposed to be, it's not his calling. It's not suppo it's supposed to maybe come to church once a week. That's all. Maybe once a month. He's supposed to be taught to have personal relationship with God. He, that is what he's supposed to t be taught to do. Have personal relationship with God. Love God. Have to you know, learn to deepen your relationship with him. To hear God. To walk with him. But, and, but go and do your work. He's supposed to be taught to know God. To be friendly with God. And to be locked up in his personal relationship with God. And in his laboratory. Or, or, and in his... In his, in his uh, in his laboratory and studio. But instead of, instead of them locking him up in his studio and telling him and teaching him just how to... If I were his pastor, I would rather be going to visit him once in a while in his studio, maybe for once, once a week or one hour a week, and just encourage him and, you know, sow the word of God into his life, you know, release the word of God to him, encourage him, and all that. Instead of making him to lose two hours on the road to come to church and two hours back, or to, you know, or to just to sit down in church every day. But this is not even nothing. I, I was told that this guy was made to come to church and sit down in church, spend almost five hours in church every day. Five hours in church. They were killing I mean, wasted time is a kill time. You, they were killing his life. Wasted time is a wasted life. They were killing his life. They were killing his life. His time, his life. This guy was, I mean, they even ordained him to be a pastor. So he had to abandon all his projects. He had to abandon his life activities. He had to abandon his mission for which God created him. So who is more important? The God that gave the person an assignment and the assignment that is given to you from God Almighty or some pastors that are, you know, you know, that representing just, you know, earthly structure here on the earth. That is why we must all discover that the kingdom is more important than the church. The kingdom is more important than the church. If you are living for the kingdom, if you are living for the purpose of the kingdom, if you are dedicated to the kingdom, that is what is more important. That is what is most important. You don't need to be more dedicated to the church than you are dedicated to the kingdom. And your calling is a kingdom calling. Your calling and the focus on your calling is dedication to the kingdom, first of all. Can you imagine Five years of I mean, five years being a pastor for five years, and you know, investing and dedicating five year, five hours a day for five years, that is like ten thousand hours almost. Ten thousand hours just in fruitless activities. So I say, what did that give you to? What did that church pastoring? What did that give you? That pastoring, that coming to church five hours a day. You know what is what he said, and the wife said, uh, it's depression, of course, frustration. Lack of joy, frustration, depression. That is the fruit of it. Going to church, you could be in church and still be depressed. You could be going to church every day, serving in the church, being pastor and still be depressed. Why? Because you have not taken back your life. You have mortgaged your life, not just to church, church you know, to workers, I mean, to your, to your job or to your director, to your company, but people mortgage their lives to their churches and to their pastors. You mortgage your life to your religion. You mortgage your life to your pastor, to your church. You have mortgaged your life to religion. You have mortgaged your life to institution, earthly institution. Instead of you to give back, you take back your life and give it back to the owner, to the creator, to the person who created you for himself, first of all. They wasted away that man's life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I imagine what that man for 10,000 hours that guy has wasted. What he could have done. He, has, he would have brought solution to so many problems that we are now facing in our countries. This goes to confirm what I said the other day. <laughs> that all of us are created as an answer, as a package, as a customized package from heaven.
to resolve one problem of the other for our countries, for our nation, and for our world. All of us are sent here for a purpose of resolving one problem or the other. You are customized. You are custom made. You are packaged to be an answer to some one thing or the other. So you, if so, but but if you if you get if you get you're caught up in religion and in other deceptive you know manipulations of this world, nothing to show for it. You will end up being frustrated in life. Oh, the story of that guy touched me so bad. And I thank God that he's a smart guy. He is a smart guy. And his wife is just a gem. She's just a gem. She is just a... Oh, I love that guy, that family. I love them. I love that wife. I just love her. I spoke to them just one time in my life. Uh, but I didn't know they'd been following me. I didn't know. They, I didn't see the guy following me, but I didn't know that she was. She she had been, but he had been. But I always saw the picture of the wife here, and you know they've been following, and just maybe they've been following me just for one month or two, but they are smart enough to know that no, do we need to take our lives back? And you know what they did? The guy went and resigned. He resigned, and he said, "I even stopped going to church altogether." But not because he stopped. You know, sometimes people stop going to church and we think, oh, you stop going to church, that means you are backslidden. Oh, you stop going to church, that means you are going, you've gone away from God. No, they didn't go away from God. They stopped going to church altogether just to regain lost years. But they are having their relationship with God. They are, you know, where two or three are gathered together that are in your midst. So they are there with their friends, with their friends, with their relatives, with their family. But they are mostly focusing now on what God has called them to do. Oh, God, God have mercy on your church. God have mercy on your church, Lord. <laughs> Instead of the church to be helping facilitate the fulfillment of vision of every church member. Instead of the church to be putting their energy to equip, to fire up, to help, to push people from the pews. And to push them into the field where they could fulfill their full purpose and calling. The purpose of their creation. The goal of their creation. They are being held up in some empty, frivolous religious activities. Being manipulated by fear. By the way, where there is fear, there is no love. Perfect love doesn't have fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Nobody should ever put you under uh, duress, under pressure to be coming to church. We're coming to church, and if you don't come to church, you are this, you are that. You should run away from those kind of people. People should be pushing you to do just one thing, to fulfill the purpose for which God called you. That is the only thing people should be pushing you to do. People should be pushing you to do what God created you for. That is the right, right push. That is the right encouragement. And I'm just praying that this guy will be able to regain those years back. I just pray that in his own lifetime and in our own lifetime, he will be able to release all his inventions to the world. And how many people are spending those years and wasting their years in churches instead of being in the library? How many of them are wasting their years in churches instead of them wasting them, you know, instead of them putting them into work and investing them, in, you know, in products and services, in laboratories? So sad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And as a pastor, I have to apologize. I apologize to the whole world. This is not the picture of what church is supposed to be about. I'm very sorry. You need to take back your life, even from religion. You need to take back your life, even from manipulative leaders. You need to take back your life. You need to take back your life. As godly and as, you know, righteous as that sounds, that you are serving the church, serving the church, you need to be, first of all, more committed to your kingdom assignment. Your kingdom assignment is much more important. Your purpose of creation is much more important than any church's doctrine or any church's programs. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Now, we need to spread this word and we need to do it together. For that to happen, we need your help. 
just five little steps that you could help us to spread the word. Number one thing we need you to do is to like the videos. Please go like this video right now. Number two, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Number three, we need you to press and click on that notification bell. You see the bell? Go press on it. And number four, we need you to go comment. Write your comment, good or bad, just write what you feel. Number five, share, share, share. Share on every platform, share on Instagram, share on Facebook, just share and spread the word. Thank you so much. All right, bless you.